Hello and welcome to our program, Where God Weeps, a program where we speak about the situation of the suffering church around the world. Today we have an exceptional guest, and it is my very great privilege to welcome His Eminence Cardinal Robert Sara, the President of the Pontifical Council of Cor Unum, which is the Vatican's arm for aid and development projects around the world. A native of the West African country Guinea, Cardinal Sara was made Archbishop of Conakry at the very tender age of 34. Pope John Paul II called him the Boy Bishop. To tell us more, it is my great privilege to welcome His Eminence, Cardinal Robert Sara. Your Eminence, thank you for being with us here today in our program. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to be here. Thank you. Your Eminence, you were at that time the youngest bishop in the world. Blessed Pope John Paul II called you the boy bishop. That must have been a terrific shock when you were asked to take on this enormous responsibility of, of uh, Conakry at that time. Yes, I have had two appointments. Uh, the first appointment was with John Pope VI in 1978, April. And my country refused my appointment as bishop. And then after one year, uh, well, the government accepted my appointment and I have been confirmed by John Paul II in 1979. And at that time I was the, f the youngest bishop. And the situation in Guinea was very difficult between the government and the church. You must have wanted to run away from this responsibility. Not really, but it was frightening. And when I came to meet John Paul II, he used to call me the Vescovo Bambino. The child the bishop. The child bishop. And uh, well, I said, this is uh, a grace, but I hope that I'll be helped by the Virgin Mary and by your prayer. Our Lady has played an, a big role in your life. What, what is the importance, if you will, of Our Lady in your vocation? Well, uh, I think from the beginning, when I, I went for catechism, my parents was very really devoted to Our Lady. And uh, I think I learned from them what is to love Our Lady and to be devoted to her. And during my seminary formation, I continued to be very fond to Our Lady. And I can say that she is very near to me, still now. Your Eminence, even in your Episcopal coat of arms, you have uh, the image of Our Lady, that is, you have a, an M, right. I suppose is referring to a Mary. And then on the lower left, you have a figure, uh, you have an image of two figures in a boat. Yes. Um, can you just briefly explain what is your Episcopal coat of arms and why did you choose this image? Yes, you're right that M means Mary and uh, uh, the boat with two figures represent uh, Mary and myself inside the boat and Mary is conducting the boat to Jesus. If you notice, uh, on the top, there is a cross yes. that is Christ. So uh, all my life, all my ministry, and my diocese was conducted by the Virgin Mary. That is the significance of my uh, motto. I mean that uh, what I am, what I'm doing, must be conducted by Our Lady. And the boat, I suppose, is self-evident, would be the church. The birth means the church and my diocese. Your Eminence, Africa has seen an explosive growth. Uh, growth. Uh, in the turn of the century, there were approximately two million Catholics in Africa, and today there are 147 million. And this is, of course, projected to grow. I think some estimates suggested that in 2050 there would be 230 million yes. Catholics in Africa. To what can we attribute this enormous growth of the Catholic Church in Africa? Well, I, I don't think that uh, it's only the human effort and initiative. The only explanation could be the grace of God, you know. 
God loves Africa. And I think Africa opens his heart to, to the gospel. I think the only explanation of this growth is the grace of God. And the second one is, could be the sacrifices of missionaries. As you know, in the beginning, many missionaries died for Africa. So I think the blood of the missionaries uh, brought this growth. Like a Tertullian says, That's right. blood of the martyrs are seeds of faith. That's right, yeah. This could explain such a growth in a very short time. What weaknesses does this, that does this bring, this sort of explosive growth? Well, I think that uh, when some things are growing so rapidly, uh, sometimes we can uh, lose the process of this growth. And I think for Africa, the weakness could be um, a shallow of our Christianity or a lack of depth. A lack of rootedness. That's right, of rootedness of, of our faith. So uh, uh, we must inculturate the gospel and make our custom be evangelized. So I think uh, um, the weakness is maybe uh, uh, a lack of depth because what is young must be, could be very fragile. But we look uh, after the help of God and the Holy Spirit that the faith might be more rooted in Catech Africa. Catechism. Through catechism uh, and uh, through um, the, the work of catechists that are very near to the people and uh, through prayer because I, I think that if we, we, could, we could succeed that every Christian have a good relation, a personal relation with Christ, that make our faith more deepened. In an article, and I'll make a small quote here, upon the occasion of Pope Benedict XVI, his visit, his second visit to Africa, you stated that Africa seems to be experiencing a certain calm against the violence that has marked it over the past two decades. With this calm, what is the task now at hand? I think we have stated uh, after the Second uh, Synod that the, the, the first task is reconcil reconciliation, justice and peace. I think without uh, um, authentic reconciliation, it will be difficult to make a very lasting peace. So I think that right now, uh, not only the church must deepen his, her faith, but we can work that the African people must be reconciled. But this supposes, as you mentioned, justice, because without the foundation of truth, yes. this reconciliation cannot really ever occur. And my question are, for example, situations in Rwanda and other countries, are they ready to face the truth about what has happened uh, in order to bring about peace? I know that it's not very easy to face the truth and uh, to recognize our failures. But I think the work today for Africa, for the church in Africa, is to, to help people to recognize what we have done wrong and to face Christ who is the truth. And if we faith Christ, then Christ will lead us to recognize our failure and to take the right path to reconciliation, justice and peace. Through the perspective of love, That's as you right. say. Yeah, yeah. I think love is only the way to make people live together. And where can we find true life? Just looking at the cross. The cross is, is a revelation of the true love, the love of God and the love of man to God. So I think uh, the contemplation of the cross 
help us to understand what is love man and love God and be reconciled uh, and live in peace, justice and uh, as brothers. We've spoken a little bit about the situation now in Africa, but again I want to refer to a quote that you made about this, these times still. Uh, at the same time you stated that, quote, Africa still experiences the effects of domination, yes. of contempt, yes. of colonialism. Yes. In fact, in 1995, Pope John Paul II had said, Africa can be compared to the man mm -hmm. who went down uh, from Jerusalem to Jericho, he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Yeah. How is it that we still see Africa through this prism of what Pope John Paul II has stated? Well, I think the image is very real. Uh, Africa is like um, uh, that man uh, uh, robbed by, by, uh, by thieves. By thieves and left aside half death you know and i think uh, uh, and uh, many powerful nations are just exploiting our rich our resources without the profit of our people and uh, uh, sure we are responsible many leaders african leaders are corrupt and uh, they organize wars. They sell our resources, buying weapons. And I don't think we have money to buy to, 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 to buy weapons, but who give us weapons to fight each Against other? Each other. You know? So I think we I can recognize that Africans are responsible, but many nations are taking advantage. That's right. That's right. But the only help we can have is a, a good Samaritan, and the good Samaritan is Christ, who can help Africa. But we are the good Samaritans. Sure, but if we act in the name of Jesus Christ, not if we act uh, by... By interests. By interests, you know. So uh, uh, that's why I think the good Samaritan for Africa is really Jesus Christ and the Church. Uh, I hope that uh, we could find good nations, rich nations that could, would, would, would help Africa to develop and not to fight. Because fighting is destroying Africa and its resources. And the future. And the future, sure. In a more hopeful note, Pope Benedict XVI called Africa the spiritual lung of humanity. Yeah. What did he mean and what implications does this have? What responsibility does this now bring on Africa to respond to this call as the spiritual lung of humanity? I think the last three popes had a very great confidence to Africa. If you remember, in 1969, Pope Paul VI went to Uganda and he said, Nova Patria Christi, Africa, the new um, nation of Christ is Africa. And John Paul II said, the name of each African is written in the crucified um, palms of Christ. And in 2009, then he said that Africa is the, the, spiritual, the lung. spiritual lung of humanity. That means that um, our vocation as African, because I know that God acts with poor, with the feeble person. So I, I know that Africa could have a great role in the church and in humanity. In fact, if because we, we have many values, yes. human, spiritual values and human values. In fact, if we look at the progression of precisely those messages, yeah. the identification by Pope Paul VI of Africa as a Christian, the, the seal, if you will, yeah. 
then the crucifixion, yeah. that is, yeah. the name of Africa through Easy. the palm, the pierced, pierced palm, That's right. to the hope today. So for you, the time now of Africa and the, and the church in Africa is one of tremendous hope. Sure, I think uh, Africa uh, right now, well, I know we have many problems, uh, many difficulties, many disease, but Africa is the future of the church, the future of the humanity, because Africa is very open to Christ, and the Christ is the future, not only for the present of humanity, but the future of humanity. At the same time, we have to consider the, f the further words of Pope Benedict XVI, who said, in relation to this lung for humanity, Pope Benedict XVI stated that this lung can also become ill. Sure. And mentioned at least two dangerous pathologies. Yes. Materialism combined with relativist and nihilistic thought. How widespread is this in Africa and how can Africa and Africans protect themselves from this cultural invasion, if you will? Yes, it is a danger. I could say that right now the danger is not very spread, but uh, I hope that Africa will succeed to protect itself from this materialism and relativism. You know. But with the media, it is difficult to protect ourselves. You know. That's why the church must educate. The church must evangelize our culture, our customs, and deepen our faith. Uh, this will be the way to protect Africa from materialism and relativism. I suppose in a certain way positive enculturation in the sense of looking at what is true in African culture and tradition and in light of the gospel, bringing yeah. this right. yeah. as the protection against yeah. the virus, perhaps coming from the West with, yeah. with materialism and, and I, peace. I know that we have bad things in Africa. That we have to, well, purify these bad things and adopt the, the value of, of the gospel. But at, in the same way, uh, we have to be very linked with the values of, of the gospel. We have to have a, a personal experience with Christ that make us protected by the evasion of uh, some very modern values coming from Europe. You know. uh, during the session, uh, we have a new ethics. You know. We have new, new, language. new languages and even all kind of family to be created. Are these constellations of families. That's right. That, yes. that we must protect Africa from that kind of, of uh, ideologies that contradict the values, the Christian values and the African values. Yes. I think you called it a training of the heart. Sure, sure. That why it's the, the expression of Benedict XVI. Yeah. We have to, the formation of the heart, that means we have to accept Christ inside our heart and Christ will transform, will purify our heart and protect uh, every African from the bad values coming from Europe. I want to touch on this question of Europe and Africa because we are seeing a crisis of faith in Europe. Mm -hmm. What is the impact on Africa of the crisis of faith in Europe and how important is it for the universal church to, if you will, this new evangelization uh, for Europe, also for Africa. You know, Europe is very powerful. Powerful in technology, powerful in economic and political, and uh, powerful in, in, in many uh, fields, you know. All your armies are fighting outside Europe. So if we didn't ever evangelize Europe, Europe could, I mean, damage many 
many values in in the world you know so i think uh, it is very necessary that africa and europe could work together to rediscover the the gospel to rediscover christ you have many riches you have you have many experience uh, uh, a monastic experience theological experience spiritual experience and we can have a good help from europe to deepen our heart but europe could have many values coming from from africa and together we can follow christ uh, and i think this meeting is very important that uh, how to look together at christ how to uh, try to follow christ and accept the values of of uh, the gospel i think it was cardinal peter turkson who said that uh, the decline of the faith in europe is leaving africa like an orphaned child because yes. of the spiritual heritage that's right and the intellectual heritage yeah. that is still important as we spoke earlier when we talk about catechesis yeah. and the necessity for roots in africa also for this intellectual and philosophical tradition not to leave africa an orphan i think well you brought africa europe brought christ the values of of the gospel to africa to asia so i can say you are our fathers in the faith you know so if you uh, abandon the value you brought to africa then we are orphans so uh, that why i think we your children must help you to risk this this Redis- rediscover this discover Christ and the, the gospel and you must help us to deepen our heart our heart our, our faith so uh, uh, we are a family so we must live as a family the body of Christ the body of Christ so um the church is really a family so there is no african church european church we are the body of christ and we must work together cardinal peter also mentioned which i think is relevant for this discussion he said this process of dechristianization has taken centuries that's right yeah with the with the uh, experience that we see today in africa mm. the risk is that this similar dechristianization mm. yeah. with materialism and yeah. secularist thought yeah. in africa can take a period of generations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is of course the greater yeah. risk for Africa. Yeah, 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 yeah. I suppose what we've seen yeah. happening so yeah. over such a long time could happen in a very short time yeah, in Africa. Yeah. The big challenge today as John Paul II said um the missionary is the saint the holy uh, missionary. So we need as John Paul II as Mother Teresa holy person to evangelize we didn't need any strategy the only strategy is to live with Christ and that why Benedict XVI for the beginning of his papal ministry asked us to look at St Paul because St Paul encountered Christ his life has been completely changed and we have to make the same experience like St Paul and the second year he said we have to look at St Giovanni Giovanni Vianney John Vianney the curé of Ars the curé of Ars this man was very humble very holy he spent all the day in the church praying and the people came to him and people came, came to him and he converted many people so we need today to imitate st paul to imitate jean marie vianney the curé of dars we need to imitate john paul ii and mother teresa you know this is the only strategy 
and Africa and Europe need holy missionaries. Uh, this is the way to re-evangelize Europe and Africa. So you're hopeful? I hope so, that uh, we will succeed if we make the same personal encounter with Christ. Each one of us? Yes. Thank you, Your Eminence, for having been with us today in our program. Thank you for, for uh, having uh, given me the opportunity to, ex ex to express my convictions with my bad English, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. It was very well. Thank, thank you. you. Thank. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for having been with us today in our program, Where God Weeps. And if you'd like to know more about the situation of Catholics in Africa, I would encourage you to look at the contact information at the end of this program. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Bye.